Hey, welcome to Programming Rainbow. In this video, we will continue on configuration of NeoVim and NVChad. In this video, we will be adding Python support to our NeoVim NVChad configuration. So if you want to follow along with this video, you want to go to github.com Programming Rainbow, and then this one's going to be NVChad minus 2.5. So this is the 2.5 version of NVChad. And this is the exact same repo that we've been working with the whole time in configuring NeoVim. So if you've followed the C++ or the Go or the original NeoVim video, uh, this is the same repository. And this is building on top of our original video where we set up Lua in NeoVim and NVChad. So you will need to watch that video to follow this video, but none of the other ones. This is separate from all the other ones, but you do need the original video. Okay, so you, you've already followed the previous video, so you already have this repo installed into your your config for um, NVim. So I'm not going to show you that because you've already done that. But I just kind of want to show you a Python project. This is an older Python project, so it's not great, but it, it is written in Python. So I'm using the the NVChad. Uh, setup that we left off with in the very first video. So I have not configured anything for Python at this point. But you do notice we immediately have syntax highlighting. That's because by default, when, when tree setters installed by default, it automatically has Python support. So you don't have to add Python support. So even though I haven't configured anything for Python, I already have the coloring, you know, the syntax highlighting that's given me the different colors. So haven't configured anything yet. I have no LSP running. I have no linting, no formatting, no nothing, but I do have syntax highlighting. So let's check this uh, little, this old game that I wrote that um, is written really poorly, but it still works. I need to source because I'm using Pygame Zero for this project, so I need to activate the environment. Okay, so this is basically just Tetris, but you get any color. Uh, it just gives you a random color for every block that falls. So it's not sticking with specific colors. It's randomizing the colors. But other than that, it's just bo box standard Tetris. And it speeds up with each level. It follows all the basic rules. And there, there's no... All of this game is all drawn just with Pygame Zero. There is no pre-rendered textures whatsoever. This is all using drawing rectangles and text, and uh, there is bubble text happening here, but. Okay, so I'm gonna come out of this, and we'll start working on how to set this up so we can see, we can have linting and we can have formatting and an, a language server for our Python code. So again, uh, we have syntax highlighting, the tree sitter basically, uh, but we are missing our LSP config, our lint, and our conform that handles the LSP, the linting, and the formatting. So I'm going to be pulling up my scratch window that's easier. I can just pull the scratch window up anytime I want or make it disappear. And we can look at the GitHub page over here. And I do have the other... We're going to be using Pyrite for our LSP. We're going to be using Flake 8 for our linting. We are going to be using um, iSort just for the imports to sort our imports out. But but our main formatter is going to be black for Python. You know, that's kind of the one everybody uses. So those are the four things that we're going to be dealing with. And I've added it basically all the way down at the bottom. There'll be pass Golang. There is a section for Python. And it's pretty simple and straightforward. Not too much is going on here. We're going to use PyWrite for our LSP, but we don't actually need to configure anything. So it's really simple and straightforward. So let me just pull up that scratch window again. And that's what it's called here. And um, I'm using Tiling Window Manager in Haskell. I can just pull up a, a specific terminal whenever I feel like it and just make it disappear and pull it up again. So I'm already in um, my local config, the hidden config folder for NeoVim. So I'm already inside that folder, which is tilde 
which is your local, whatever your local is, um, forward slash dot config nvim. This is where configuration for NeoVim and nvchad is at. So I'm just going to run NeoVim in here and we'll look at what we have going on. So again, if you've watched the first video, everything's the same. This is set up like the first video, conform, lint is set up the way it was in the first video, LSP config, exact same thing going on. And let's look at tree sitter first. So we know that we already have tree sitter Python support for tree sitter, but just to be complete, let's just add it anyway. So I'm going to add it alphabetically here and it's just going to be Python. However, it, again, it's already been installed. That was just by default. Tree sitter already has the Python installed by default, but I'm just adding it. This is what you would do for any other language. So that's pretty easy. Tree sitter is already done. It's actually already up and running. So I'm just going to close that. And we have the LSP. So the LSP we're going to be using over here. Let's see. Over here is Pyrite. And this is uh, made by the not evil company, Microsoft. And it's basically going to be our language server. And it, it works pretty much out of the box, works really good. So all we really need to do if we look down here is we're not, I'm not specially configuring anything. I'm just telling it to make sure Pyrite is installed and then to give it the default configuration. So if we pull this up and we are in LSP config, this very top one here, the only thing this is doing is making sure that Mason installs this package. So I'm going to let it do that. I'm going to add Py, uh, Pyrite. So there we go. We added Pyrite. So that's just making sure the package is installed, but that's not configuring the package. Now, also, if you have Pyrite on your system and you don't want Mason to install this, you could do two things. You could add it here and then add it to the, the ignore list, or you can just not put it here at all. Either way will work where it won't install the package if you're using a local version. But um, I'm not, so I'm just going to install that package. And then right here on this default server, since I'm not doing anything special like we did with Lua, we, we did a special thing with Lua. Since I, I'm just going to do the default, I'm going to use this for loop that does the default. So anything I put right here into this table is going to run the default on it, and it's going to just get it up and running with default configurations. So we'll just put pi right there. I'll just add a comma after it. And that's all we got to do for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to restart the scratch one here. I'm going to go to the main one that I was that I was looking at the Python project here, and I'm going to restart this one. So I'm going to restart it, and I should see that PyWrite is installed, and then I should see that the LSP starts working. So installing PyWrite is happening right down here at the bottom. And if I go and look at this file, I should be getting, there we go. And it even says that I have some errors and it's totally true because this is, I thought about just not showing this code at all. It's really bad code and I'm do, using a ton of globals and it's just not, it's just not very well. It's, it's um, when I was first learning Python. So there is an issue here and basically this is just a whole logical issue with the way I've programmed this and I would just need to rewrite this. So I just left it. So we do know that um, our LSP is working. We even have this complaint here. And let's see here, if I go control W D, I'll get the floating version. And it's just, it doesn't know what I'm doing because I'm, I'm messing around. I'm, I have a tuple going in here sometimes, and sometimes I don't. And the logic is just not, it, it works, but the LSP is, you know, really complaining about this, but the, but the game still works. So, but for me to fix this, I just want to rewrite this thing from the ground up. But anyway, it still works. It shows us that the LSP is working and our, you know, so LSP is working and we can even look at Mason and we can see that PyWrite has been installed. And if we click on two, we see that it's a, it's a uh, LSP. And if we go TS install info, we'll see that for tree sitter that's doing the language, um, the highlighting for us, we'll see that Python is already installed. But again, it was installed before we even started doing anything. I'm just kind of remembering my alphabet. 
There it is. So that was always there. So we never even got a message saying that tree sitter was adding that because it was just there from the beginning. Okay, so that is our LSP. I'm not gonna actually configure anything with it. It works out of the box good enough for me. So that's the LSP out of the way. And there. So we can look at maybe, let's go down to linting. Linting is another one that we're gonna use Flacate and it's just gonna work out of the box. We don't really, I don't have any special configuration that I'm doing with it. It just kind of works. So, and that's over here, Flake 8. You can read about it on GitHub. It's a PyCQA Flake 8. And it's using PyFlakes and some other stuff and it's just putting them together. I believe that's pretty much what everybody's using. So I'll just pull up my scratch one again and we'll go into the lint. I already have it open here, but it should just be Python equals the Python being the file type that we're opening. So when it's opening any file type of Python, we're going to be using Flake 8. So this one is going to try to configure it and also because I have Mason Lint installed, it's it's going to install this as well. Now if you don't want Flake 8 installed, if you already have a local version of it, you can go into let, let me save this packet or this file real quick. You can go into Mason Lint and you can put it on the ignore list. So it'll still configure it for you, but it'll be using your local version. Since I'm going to let Mason just download it. I'm not going to put it on the ignore list, but if you, again, wanted to use your local version, you just put it there. So it's going to configure it for us. And let me just check to see. So Python Flake 8. Yeah, that's tree sitter right there. So yeah, I'm actually not doing anything. I'm letting it just the out of the box configuration work. So let's check out some linting. I'm gonna close this and let, let me just make sure the files are saved. looks like I've saved everything, cool. Okay, so I'm gonna restart this again. It's installing Flake 8. Okay, so um, let's do some linting stuff. So what if I were to say, remove one of these tabs? I should have done a couple of these things first to see what, what is inside of what's being done by the LSP by um, Pi right and what's being done by Flake 8. Uh, I kind of missed that. I should have done that. Uh, we could, you know what, I'm going to save this as it is. And um, let's do that. Let's disable Pi right. Sorry, not Pi right. Um, Flake 8. I'm going to disable this. Just gonna let that go away. Now this is already shut down, so I'm just gonna start it up again and see what kind of complaints we get. So we have expected indent block. Uh, it's gonna complain here, probably the same. Some something's amiss, yeah, basically. So uh, we we'll, we know what that looks like now. Let's do some other things. I should have done this ahead of time, but I kind of want to show which ones would be, you know, let's, let's remove one here. Yeah, it's, it's pretty basic di diagnostic stuff. That's coming from Pyrite. Okay, so I'm going to put this back. So now that should be enabled again, and I need to restart this system. Okay, so down here, I've removed the comma that was supposed to be there. So now I'm going to do the control W and then D again. Oops, sorry, I didn't do it fast enough, maybe. There we go. So this number one here is coming from Pyrite, but number two here is coming from Flake 8. Okay, so we are getting, we're getting diagnostics from both of them. And we can check out the indentation too. I'm just going to undo the mistake that I put in and... I will take away one of these. 
now we're getting all kinds of stuff and we're getting complaints from both of the systems basically before it just complained about an indentation so let's see what the hover on this one does and again we have the unexpected that's coming from pyrite and the one below it is coming from flake 8 okay so that gives us linting i mean we're getting linting from both of them but we're getting extra linting and we have our language server running. Nothing really is happening um, that is too complex here. Yeah, there we go. And we have one complaint here. I know we have the two, two errors from that one part of my code that it's just, I didn't want to bother fixing it. I just need to rewrite it, but I'm kind of wondering where the other one is coming from. Oh, it's disappeared. So maybe it was just, maybe it just needed to recheck. Okay, so we have tree sitter, we have linting done, and we have LSP. Okay, so it gets a little bit more complicated when we get into formatting because I sort and black don't play amazing together. I get they kind of play together, but I had things I had them fighting where one would change something and the other one would go back and change it differently. So it would they were like not playing correctly together. They were both trying to edit something. And so each time you would go to save the file, it would just keep changing your code and you would get like three or four different versions of the way the code would lo look and it you would get errors because of it. So I kind of played around with it, finally got them working together because I really wanted iSort and Black to work together. Also, I was getting, sometimes it would time out, like say Black would time out or iSort would time out. So I tried to put Black on fast. If you have problems with this and you don't really care, I would just remove iSort if you don't need iSort and just keep Black. But, um, it seems like they're both working for me. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to, for Python files, we're going to tell it to format with iSort and then black. Okay, so we're going to go to conform. So I'm just going to close these unused, the, the files that we're done with. So in conform, and this is the exact same story, whatever I put here is going to be automatically installed by Mason conform. But if I have local versions of these and I want to use the local version, I can instead put it on the ignore list. So I'm going to put Python here. That's for the file type that I'm dealing with here. And I'm going to put iSort and black. I'm just going to put a comma after this one just to... So what's going to happen here is this is going to automatically configure these, but Mason mason conform is going to look and if it doesn't see these automatically installed it's going to install them for us and then they're going to be configured for us so if you have them in your system already you can go into mason conform and you can put them on the ignore list right here just put them in this ignore list right here so that you can use your local version instead it'll still configure it but it won't tell mason to install it okay so again, I don't have them on the system, so I'm just going to let Mason install them for me. So in conform. So I'm doing this. I'm not going to configure anything just yet. We'll just let these things download and install. Okay, and see if they're working. And then we'll add the configurations. I'm just going to save this. I'm just going to close the scratch pad, and i got to restart this one. When I restart this, we'll see that it's that Mason is downloading those packages that I don't have installed. Okay, there we go. Mason's installing iSorts at the bottom of the screen. And now it's black was successfully installed. This is automatically set up to format on save. So the fastest way I do it in telling, instead of telling it to manually format, I just always tell it to save because I have it already set up to format on save. So, and it says, see this line too long? What it's done, I'm going to undo it. It took this line right here. It took this line right here and it stretched it out longer, but it became longer than 80 lines. And then the linter, I believe, 
Flake 8. Flake 8 is complaining about it. So I believe Black. Black is the one that straightened this out into one long line. And then Flake 8 is complaining about it. And that gets annoying because you're like, where is this coming from? Why is this happening? And then something. So I'm going to save it again and watch what happens. I save it. And it's um, Black has put this all in one line instead of what was on multiple lines before. And now right here, we can't read it. It's off the line. So I'm going to do the hover on it. On this line, I'm going to do Control W and then D. Sorry, I did it too slow again. Control W, D. And that gives us the hover diagnostics of the exact same thing that's being written off the screen here. And it says line too long. It's, this is, happens to be 84 characters and anything over 79 it's complaining about. So this is something that um, is coming from Flake 8. So we can tell Black to, you know, be 80 lines. So it'll break it up. That actually, what it was originally was actually formatted from Black before this video. So let's go check that out. So if I go down here, it looks like I'm adding two configurations. And what these are doing is they're actually just putting the, if you're running this from the command line, they're just adding command line switches. So one of them would be, if I was writing black in from the command line, is the fast one. The other one is actually these two together. It says line length 80. So they are on separate lines because they're separate strings. But imagine in your head that in the command line, it's minus minus line minus length space 80. Okay? And you might be configuring black another way. And if you are, this is probably overriding it. So just know that these, where, where you see prepend args, these are adding arguments in. And if you have a file that is either, that is a local file inside of your project that is configuring iSort or black, the, this is going to trample on that. So you'll want to disable these if you're doing it that way. For myself, I'm not doing huge code bases. I don't really care. I just want my NeoVim to start up and act the way I want it to act. So we're going to add these in, and they're going into the formatter section of the of conform. Okay, so basically we're going to configure black, and then we're going to configure iSort. So let me just grab this. It's, it's the easiest thing to do. I'm going to leave the formatters part. Of, well, I'll just grab the whole thing. I'll just copy it here. And if we go to conform, we're already in conform. See, we have up here, it says formatters by feature or file type or whatever. And we have iSort in black. And then here we have format on save setup. But right here we have formatters. This is where we actually configure any of these things. And you may already have this filled up with stuff. If you do, j just add inside of it what we're adding. Um, but since I have nothing here, I'm going to just paste that on top of it. So if you already had another language in here, you don't want to delete the other language stuff. You just want to add in next to it or after it or before it, this part right here. So basically we're saying black, which is right here. I want to add some arguments to it. One of them being fast and the other one being the line length. I want it to only be 80. For iSort, I'm going to tell it to use the black profile. I actually can't remember if this was fixing something. I believe this was fixing the way it was formatting so they wouldn't fight each other because they were, they were fighting back and forth with each other. So every time I'd save a file, it would change the shape of the um, imports, and it was, it was driving me crazy. So this, I believe, was able to fix it. So with these in place... It's already installed and everything else. It should just start acting a little better. Mainly that, that, that line that was too long shouldn't be too long anymore. So I'm going to close this. Again, i got to restart this one. Okay, so we had that line that was too long right here. So I'm going to save it now with the W. And it's broken that line up. See that? And, oh, I don't like this code. So that's the formatting. And again, down here, sometimes pay attention. You'll notice that sometimes one of them might not work. So I think it's conform info. Yeah, let's see here. So these could be old. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this file right here. I'm going to delete this file, this log file. 
and because these could have been from you know yesterday or a year ago or i was doing something wrong so i can't trust that these just happened um recently i think it happened before the video where i was um removing all the the parts that i didn't want to be in there anymore so i'm going to delete this and then i'm going to restart so this is local state and vim conform yeah So this is going to be in your local, and it's going to be local state and vim inform log. So this is the the full length of it. It's going to be hidden file local, and it's going to be state and vim and conform log. So we're not getting rid of anything else. It's just going to be the log file for conform. And now I'm going to start it back up again. And this is good if you think you're having a problem with if it says it's failed, your formatter has failed, maybe you've made a typo or something like that, it's really good just to look into this. Inform info, that's kind of an, a good place. And it looks like both of them are working. So let me close it again and then do a save. So I didn't, sometimes you'll get something down here and that's when you want to look into it. So I'm going to kind of mess some stuff up here. Let's do that. And maybe I'll put too many lines here. Okay, that looks good. And then let's look at it again. Okay, and it looks like there was no no issues going on and iSword and Black are both running correctly. And that they're running for this this one because this the file type of this is a Python file. Type just put a question mark there and it is a Python file type. Okay? So all of that's great. You might not want to type all that in. And again, if you are using a configuration, you might want to remove, or let, let me just show it here. If you are using any anything that, that I put in here that has this uh, prepend args, just imagine that these are in conflict with any project file that is configuring. So if you have something configuring black locally, that is a hidden file or a config file that's in your Python project, this is probably trampling on that. So for me, it's fine. For you though, if you don't know why it's not paying attention to your local configuration file, just remove this or comment it out and see if that doesn't fix it for you. Uh, and that will be for any language, it'll, it'll be like that. Cause I'm basically, I'm adding arguments in w when this gets run. I wanna show the normal one. so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of here and I'm going to grab the the version straight off of the repo and it's going to look different. So let's I'm just going to completely nuke my setup here. So uh, local share in Vim, yeah, I'm going to. No, I don't suggest you do this. I'm just doing this to completely get rid of my setup. So there we got share. We got cache and we have config. I'm gonna come out of this folder actually. Okay, so I am going to, I think I removed it, but let me just make sure that I removed that file. Okay, so now what we can do is we can go right to the GitHub repo here and git clone and i'm doing this from my i cd'd into the top level home directory and right here we we want to clone this but we want to clone it into our tilde forward slash dot config forward slash nvim which is going to be our neovim configuration okay so that's where i'm cloning it to and we can actually get rid of the dot config uh, dot git file that's in there so i'm going to do that. So it is dot git. We don't need the dot git at all. Okay. So now when I boot this up, well, let, let's, let's do it over here in this one. It's going, it, everything's going to be missing and it's going to start reconfiguring itself. So this is a just cold boot. Nothing was installed on the system or, you know, for, for NeoVim and NVChad, just nothing is there and it's getting everything and setting it up. And it's just going to be set up with Lua because that's 
we'll we'll see it in a second here. So CDN2 there. And what I've done here is this is the original setup, but I've added a whole bunch of stuff to it. But it's all been disabled. So uh, tree sitter, we have C, C make, C++, the Go stuff, make, Python, but all commented out. And then in LSP config, we have C lang D, Go please, PyWrite, other stuff may be added in the future. And we can see that the for the default servers, we have PyWrite, but it's all commented out. It's at, been added, but commented out. There For, for CLangD, we had some configuration going on, so it's commented out. For GoPlease, we had more configuration going on. For PyWrite, it's doing the default configuration. So it's all been added, but commented out. For Lint, uh, we're only doing linting with Lua and Python, so it's... Python's been commented out. Let me go back real quick to, oh, no, no, it's, we haven't been there yet, conform. So in conform, we have C, C++, Go, and Python all commented out. We have um, the formatter configuration for C, for Golang, uh, Go imports, revisor, Go lines, and then Lua. I've added Lua because this is for people who don't want to make the local Lua file to configure. They want their Lua projects to act the way that this, when they're, when they're in NVChad configuring it, it is set up with a Lua configuration, but the projects won't be. So this right here, uncommenting this, will just get everything, your projects to act exactly the same way. But again, this tramples on your local configuration file. So if you have a local one, you don't, you don't want to uncomment this. But right here, you have our, the Python that we were just doing. It's right there. You can just uncomment that, and you're up and running. So I just wanted to show that that's already there. I put it all in, and as, if I find any bugs or errors, I'll change that. As new languages come in, they'll also be added, but you don't have to manually type all that stuff in. But I would like you just to understand what each of it's doing and why you may want to disable things that um, may not be working for your situation or your project or how you might want to change things. And again, all these things that I've been looking at, um, they're, they're all on GitHub. Here's GitHub Microsoft PyWrite for the LSP. Here is Flake 8 on GitHub. There's also a web page for it too, but this is the GitHub page for Flake 8. All the documentation you may want to look at. There's iSort. Um, and here is Black. Okay. But you can just grab my repo if you just want to use my configuration. And again, it just has the plain Jane Lua. All the other stuff's been added but disabled. So you can pick and choose however you want to add it. Okay? So I hope that was educational. If anybody has any questions, just ask them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Or if you have suggestions or found bugs, you know, putting them there helps everybody to understand, you know, a better or worse way or a different way to do things. Who knows? If you have any questions, just ask them. I always try to answer the questions if it's if I know the answer, if I can figure the answer out. Okay. Again, thanks for watching and bye.